All right, today we're going to be making a pair of Paul Carmody's DIY hit makers, a pair of studio monitors. We can get the entire design and everything from his site. He spec'd out the dimensions, the crossover design. He's got listening frequency responses for the speakers, all that jazz. And what's cool about these is you can buy the components in kits from sites like Parts Express and Meniscus Audio and whatever. We're using Parts Express because we just want to get the kit with the front of the cabinet. We don't care about the, the sides and back of the cabinet because we can just buy MDF ourselves and cut that out. Uh, but yeah, this kit is wicked awesome. It's one per speaker. It comes with all the jazz that you need. And it even came with uh, the speaker posts, even though the site explicitly claims that it does not come with speaker posts. So your mileage may vary, but get your shit together, Parts Express. So my coworker got these from a shipping locker out of the States and drove them over to Calgary for me. And this coworker, what? How did you expect to eat a party tray of freaking sushi? You're four feet tall. Anyway, so she's a deer and she got me these kits and we've got our MDF sides, top, bottoms, and back all cut out. And we cut out holes for the ports. You need to cut out your own holes for the port. That's one reason that maybe getting a full kit is better because then you get the the ported back, but whatever. So next we're gonna work on the crossovers. Uh, we used some pressed particle board crap, whatever this is, uh, sawed it out into chunks and that would fit in the bottom of each speaker. And then took the crossover design from Polly Paul's website and just glued it all together and soldered everything together in a mess. It looks horrible. I mean, there's five connections at this point. It's it's uh, about as ugly as it gets, but we hot glued everything on it down. We zip tied the inductors and we're good to go. There's no, no shame in making an ugly crossover. Uh, labeled all the wires, that's a really good move uh, so that when you're ready to solder up and wire in your speaker, you can keep track of everything. Uh, I put a couple little posts at the bottom of the uh, speakers so that I could screw the crossovers down onto them and we started gluing the boxes together. Good thing to do is to put the foam in before you finish gluing the boxes otherwise you gotta stuff it in afterwards like a loser. So I stuffed the foam in afterwards like a loser and drilled out the speaker post holes in the back. That's, that's another step that I missed there. And here we go. We've got some completed cabinets. My friend was making a set too. Guess something I failed to mention. We used these little nail staple things from some sort of nailer gun to hold the wood together as well as the wood glue. We didn't have enough clamps to do that. Uh, next, I sanded the corners down roughly, used a Dremel to smooth off those nail heads, and used some wood filler to deal with all the nicks and the MDF and stuff. And I just hand sanded all the edges and corners so it looks uh, sloppy, but it's nice and smooth. And it's time to paint. Now painting these was an adventure. Uh, it was a little chilly outside, not chilly enough that it should have affected the paint, but this Krylon chalky finish is just bullshit. Never use this paint. No matter what, I used multiple cans, used them inside, used them at proper temperature. I shook them vigorously for a full minute. These things just, just jizz out globs of paint all over your, your project and it doesn't match the color on the cab whatsoever. It looks like an espresso machine just exploded next to the speakers. It looks like Tim Dillon sharded all over them after eating some fancy steak in LA or whatever the fuck that guy does. So I was, you know, just as a joke, I just wrote left and right on top of the speakers, uh, smudged it in paint because I knew I was going to sand it off and start over. And then I had the wonderful idea of just rubbing off all the paint because maybe the stain looks all right. 
and lo and behold it actually looks kind of cool so I uh, used some more paint a uh, good solvent for paint is paint and uh, wiped it all off and we've got speakers that have a real antique leathery vintage look to them and we're ready to stick the guts inside and kick the donkey's ass uh, first we stick in our crossover boards uh, we solder up the the post terminals on the back of the speaker uh, screw in our crossovers and then it's time to put in uh, the speakers the drivers themselves of course I took the smaller driver and wired it in through the larger hole um, much like my early sexual experiences, you know, it's difficult to know which hole is right. Axe that, move on, get the drivers wired in through the right holes, screw those speakers in, screw the ports in, and we have a set of studio monitors. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I am, without a doubt, the smartest, most talented, um, most, most achieved and a highly well-regarded audio engineer and particle physicist. And I gotta say, these things sound good. They sound good to me. Here's the recording straight to your speakers. And here it is recorded through a couple of Shure SM57s with no processing. And what does that audio comparison mean? I have no idea, but I did it and you heard it and you better like it. You better like it like you like this video. I tried promoting the gay banjo video on Reddit and my god, I was a piece of shit. I was told to fuck off and I'm a bigot now. So I'll be living life as a bigot for the rest of my life. If any bigots out there have any tips on how I can uh, behave, change my attitude towards people or marginalized groups. Uh, I figure I might as well fit into the label that I've been given, so any tips or advice, please let me know in the comments. Uh, we're out for now until I do the next speaker build. Uh, highly recommended. Uh, any speaker build kits online, but these Paul Carmody ones sound absolutely dope. I love you very much, and I'll see you soon.